Kuwait is the latest Saudi Arabia ally to downgrade ties with Iran, saying today that it has recalled its ambassador. Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Sudan, and the United Arab Emirates all cut or downgraded diplomatic ties with Iran this week after protesters set fire to the Saudi Arabian embassy in Tehran following Saudi Arabia's execution of a prominent Shiite cleric. Today, Saudi Arabia's foreign minister said this. What would it take to resolve this? Very simple. Iran should back off. They should stop being aggressive. They should stop interfering in the affairs of their neighbors. They should stop supporting terrorism. Isn't that what all of us around the world want? Joining us now, Asra Nurmani, co-founder of the Muslim Reform Movement and author of Standing Alone, an American Woman's Struggle for the Soul of Islam. Asra, what's your reaction to what the Saudi foreign minister just said? I would say that he should look in the mirror and say those exact same words to himself and the leaders of the government of Saudi Arabia. For the last 40 years, the government of Saudi Arabia has exported to the world an ideology of Islam that has wreaked havoc in the world. It has fed terrorist groups from Sudan to Malaysia and Indonesia. It's caused the killings of people in San Bernardino, California. And these Arab countries that are standing with the government of Saudi Arabia are standing on the co incorrect side of history. We as Muslims in the Muslim reform movement are part of the resistance. We refuse to accept this ideology that the government of Saudi Arabia has put forward. And this is not for us a sectarian battle. This is a battle about our faith. And what I find so remarkable is that a leader of the government of Saudi Arabia can have so much denial about the monster that they have unleashed into the world. They have to take responsibility and end this tragedy of the Islam that they practice. Uh, sir, the Saudis executed a Shiite cleric solely for things he has said and things he has said in things he said in opposition to their regime. They had to know what the reaction would be in Iran. And around the world, Lawrence, I mean, people are condemning this execution throughout the world. I'm seeing from Muslims an expression of condemnation against Saudi Arabia that I have never before seen. I'm seeing people finally standing up to this dynasty that claims to have a stairway to heaven. And in fact, what they represent is a very, very dangerous ideology. And so when they murdered that cleric, what they did was continue an entire decades-long track record of punishment of bloggers, poets, women, civil society activists that simply want human rights and freedom. And, you know, we really have to look deep in our hearts as Americans and as citizens of the world. You know, the people of this world stood up against slavery in the South the white supremacists in apartheid South Africa. In my native India, Mahatma Gandhi stood up against the British. This is an ethical dilemma of our generation right now. The Saudi government is not practicing the right interpretation of Islam for our world today. We need to challenge their ideas of violence, intolerance, sexism, misogyny, and we have to do it with real moral courage. Asra Nimani, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much.